As soon as you start thinking about sharks when you're in the water, your amygdala, your limbic system becomes active and you become fearful of that. Hey folks, Professor Joel Pearson here for Future Minds. I'm a professor of cognitive neuroscience, neuroscience and psychology, but I do a bunch of other things. So when I say intuition, what comes to mind? Do you think of something purely scientific? Do you think of something more at the woo-woo, the sort of ex the other end of the spectrum, if you like? Does it feel like something almost spiritual and magical, right? Tapping into the universal blueprint. So when we're talking about intuition, the first thing, the elephant in the room is really the definition. What are we talking about? So let's get all on the same page. When I talk about intuition for various reasons, I have a very practical and I think useful definition. So it's the learnt productive use of unconscious information for better decisions and actions, right? A couple of choice words there. It's the learnt, right? So there's learning involved in intuition. It's not something innate. It's not an instinct. It's not something we're born with. It's something we learn from the environment, right? So it's a learnt productive use, so a positive use of unconscious information for better decisions and actions, right? So actions brings in the whole other realm um, from sport, football, cricket, you name it, to the military, right? This kind of idea that we can take actions and our body can use unconscious information for better and more accurate actions, not just decisions. So we started studying intuition about a decade ago in the lab and we developed a way to create it in the lab, to measure it in anyone, any time. And this at the time was a bit of a quiet breakthrough. So in neuroscience, what that means is that when you have a tool, a way to measure something, that opens up the field to a whole sort of new level of research. Just in the same way that brain scans, seeing what's happening inside the brain opened up a huge field of neuroscience to looking at the brain research of humans while they're thinking, while they're perceiving, while they're doing things. In a similar vein, having an objective way to create and measure intuition in the lab did something similar. Fast forward a decade later, through all of that research we've been doing, some of it's published, some of it's not unfortunately yet, I developed a whole framework for understanding intuition. So in essence, once you know what intuition is and what it's not, it becomes clear when you can use intuition or when you shouldn't use intuition. Right, if you look back over so the last decade or two of psychology, there's been a lot of debate about when you sh if your intuition is good or bad, is intuition something we should trust? And it's a very black and white discussion. There's not much nuance there. It turns out once you understand what intuition is, you can measure it and you can see and think about all the brain processes involved, it becomes clear that sometimes you can trust your intuition, but other times you can't and you should not trust your intuition, right? When you're emotional, for example, you should absolutely not trust intuition. And other times, when you're in a more stable state, you can trust intuition. So these two camps, intuition's good, intuition's bad, right? They're both right, they're both wrong. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. That's really the take home of all of the science from intuition so far is it's state dependent, it's topic dependent, um, and so it's not something to be trusted and used all the time. So I've developed five rules for when we can trust intuition and when we can't trust intuition. And I go through three, these uh, in a lot of detail in the Intuition Toolkit, my book on the subject. So just very briefly, I use this acronym SMILE, S-M-I-L-E, to try and help remember these five rules. So S is for self-awareness, and that's really checking into yourself, checking your self-awareness about your emotional state. Why? Because you shouldn't trust intuition when you're feeling emotional. Whether you're stressed or anxious, or whether you're really happy, you've just fallen in love, you've just won the lottery, you shouldn't trust your intuition. Why? Because humans aren't great at knowing where our emotions come from. So if you're feeling a whole lot of emotion for one reason or another, you're gonna confuse that for the more subtle feelings of intuition that are gonna come up. So you're gonna confuse your emotional state with your intuition signals and it's gonna lead you astray. Second is M for mastery. So like I said before, intuition is not innate, it's not an instinct, it's not something we're genetically programmed with, if you like. It's something that we learn on the fly, it's dynamic, it responds to the environment. So what does this mean? It means we have to have some mastery of something before we can trust our intuition with it. If you're gonna sit down and start playing chess for the very first time, you can't use your intuition to play chess. You need to put in the hours, the time to develop that intuition in other words, your brain has to learn which signals, which patterns in the board 
predict good or bad outcomes in that context, right? So your brain has to learn these relationships. It has to learn the associations between things in the environment and possible outcomes. So you really need to have uh, experience with the thing before you can use your intuition for it. Next is I for instincts. Um, so instincts and addiction there, there's two points sort of squeezed into one. So a simple point I made before that instincts and intuition are different things. Instincts are something we're born with, right? When a baby bites into a lemon or when I bite into a lemon now, my face will screw up, right? And that's innate, that's an instinct. And there's a whole range of examples of different instincts, our craving for comfort, our dislike of discomfort, our fear of uncertainty would be two other sort of more psychological examples of instincts, where intuition is just not like that. It's an adaptive learned thing in response to the environment. So we don't want to confuse those two things or conflate them. The other point I like to make here is about uh, addictive impulses or urges. And addiction, these impulses can feel a lot like intuition, right? This pull towards anything addictive, whether it be your drugs and alcohol, or whether it be social media, right? Or gambling, behavioral things are included there. The pull towards those things um, can feel a lot like intuition, but it's absolutely not. We shouldn't confuse the two, right? So the feeling I'm getting right now that mm, I should check my social media, I should check my email. Maybe I've got an e important email. Maybe my post has gone viral, right? That that little itchiness, that little urge there is not intuition, right? That's the addictive things around social media that are pulling me towards that. And yes, this also plugs into intuitive eating, right? Anything addictive, food can be very addictive, particularly modern processed food. We should not use our intuition around eating. So next is L for low probability, but it really applies to all probabilistic, hard word to say, probabilistic thinking. Humans are really bad at understanding numbers. We're not good at getting understanding probability or fractions or anything like that. When we think quickly about them, when we try and use our intuition for numbers and probabilities, we often get that wrong. And psychology textbooks are full of hundreds of examples of this. The other side of, the other way to think about this would be like a shark attack rule. So even if you're told that the, the chances of seeing a shark or having an encounter with a shark, let alone um, being bitten by one, is such a low probability that you basically should not worry about it. As soon as you start thinking about sharks when you're in the water, your amygdala, your limbic system becomes active and you become fearful of that. So you throw those probabilities out the window, right? Even though in Australia, you're more likely to be hurt by a kangaroo than a shark, it doesn't matter, it's a scary thing. Once you feel that emotion, once you have those mental images in your mind, those probabilities just don't matter. And then E for the end of smile there is for environment. So the rule there is only use your intuition for familiar environments, reliable environments, because the learning behind intuition is specific to context or the environment. The things you learn in the office won't translate that well to things at home. An example I often give of this is Steve Jobs, who used his intuition uh, at Apple. He spoke about it in many interviews. He went to India to study intuition, and he loved it. And it did amazingly well for him at Apple, not only in product design, these beautiful, simplistic products, but also in the management of Apple. When it came to later in his life and his home decisions, and in particular his health decisions where he didn't have mastery, where it was a different environment, and he followed his intuition by putting off his uh, treatment for his cancer when he was diagnosed with cancer later in life, um, almost everyone agrees that was a really bad decision. And he followed his intuition there and it led him astray because it was a different context and he didn't have mastery. So very, very briefly, that's the five rules for when you should or shouldn't use intuition. Um, I hope that's helpful. I hope that's uh, something you can hold in mind. I'm a big fan of having a daily practice of intuition, practicing decisions on a small scale, noticing what it feels like to tap into that, that, that slight feeling. Maybe it's that sinkingness inside our bodies, in our gut, as we call it, the gut response. Uh, or maybe it's in the fingertips or the sweaty palms. But learning to feel that as part of the intuition process and then using that to help make a decision. It's just an extra bit of information. So practicing on a small scale before you move up to using intuition for large decisions. So that's intuition. Uh, we'll tap into this subject a bit more later on. But yeah, as a brief video, I hope that is useful. Uh, give us a follow if you wanna hear more about intuition, aphantasia, AI, psychology, or let me know if you wanna hear about any other topics. Drop me a line in the comments. I'll see you again soon.